I was the chief CIA asset covering the Iraqi embassy and the Libya house in New York from 1995 until 2003. And I did the Lockerbie negotiations with Libya's ambassador and senior diplomats. That was the negotiations for the handover of the two Libyans for trial at The Hague. And then I was also in, directly in negotiating with Iraq's ambassador and senior diplomats to re- resume the weapons inspections before the war. And I started that. I was the one who did it. Mm-hmm. I actually sat down with Iraq's ambassador over the course of you know two or three dozen meetings with senior diplomats. We made that happen. I was engaged in the talks to resume the weapons inspections. I warned Secretary of State Colin Powell, who lived next door to my CIA handler. I went to him twice before his big speech at the United Nations. And I told him that the Iraqi exiles were fabricating wild stories about non-existent weapons of mass destruction. I said, the whole thing's a lie. They've got no support back in the country. That If we go in there, American soldiers will be butchered and it will be a disaster. Don't do it. Don't do it. Colin Powell turned those papers over to the FBI. My team had also gave advance warning about 9-11, and that's usually what I'm most famous for. I wanted to testify in front of Congress. I contacted John McCain's office and Senator Trent Lott's office asking to testify. And 30 days later, I woke up to hear the FBI pounding on my door with an arrest warrant, and I became the second non-Arab American ever indicted on the Patriot Act. They literally came into my house and said, I said, I think you're at the wrong house. They said, and and the guy was shaking. His hands were shaking. He said, no, you're Susan Lindauer. And I said, yes, sir, I am. May, may, may I see some ID? And I was, I was nervous and he was nervous. And, and I, but I was trying to be very, very formal and polite because if the FBI knocks on your door, you're going to be polite. And I'm like, why are you here <laughs> at, you know, at eight o'clock in my, in the morning while I'm getting up to make coffee? And they said, you are under arrest on the Patriot Act. And I didn't even know what I had been accused of doing. I just knew it was, I was under arrest on the Patriot Act. Secret charges, secret evidence, secret grand jury testimony. We were never allowed to know who had accused me of what crime. The government was never required to show any evidence that I actually broke the law. What they said was that Mm -hmm. if we went to trial 24 hours before we were going to go into court, they would tell my attorney part of what I was accused of doing. But the attorney was required to sign documents that under no circumstances ever would the attorney tell me? So literally that they would have to tell him what the charges were 24 hours before it would be presented to the jury. Now, how could possibly arrange a defense in 24 hours? And the thing is, my attorney, the first attorney, I had two, the first attorney signed it willingly and did not tell me until after my case was dismissed. And he refused to turn over any of the evidence to the new attorney after he was fired. He just said, I won't give it to you. I won't give you anything. And so we didn't have any of the evidence that we had gained that would prove my innocence either. And I had demanded, I had had friends send me papers to to my attorney and he said, I won't give it to you. I won't give it to you. You can't have it. And then after the case was dismissed, he waited and the day after they dismissed the charges, he mailed everything to my house. I had a brilliant absolute total capability to defeat every charge and that's when we found out that it was Colin Powell who had filed the charges with the FBI demanding that I stay silent and that that they had to keep me quiet because he didn't want anybody to know he wanted to blame the intelligence community for not speaking up before his speech at the United Nations with this was the head of the joint chiefs four-star general head of the Joint Chiefs, 
Secretary of State who lacked the courage and integrity and conviction to stand before his fellow officers, who was sending men out to die, and he could not take the responsibility of his of his of refusing to listen to me. Uh, there was a peace option that included weapons inspections with no conditions, uh, an FBI task force inside Iraq authorized to conduct in- investigations, interview witnesses, and make arrests of terror suspects. They, the Iraqis were offering preferential contracts to the United States rebuilding Iraq after sanctions. They offered to purchase one million American manufactured automobiles every year oh for, for 10 years. Now, from the CIA standpoint, that's a big ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching right there. I've been working to recover the $2.3 trillion that Donald Rumsfeld disclosed the day before 9-11. And I've been, I know who's got it. Guys, the thefts off the Pentagon budgets are so much worse than anything you know. 216 stolen accounts totaling $450 billion in addition to the $2.3 trillion that Donald Rumsfeld acknowledged. The money was originally stolen in 97, 98, 99 during the Bill Clinton administration. The person who stole it, the mastermind, is a federal inmate. He's been locked up on a 30-year sentence. He's been in prison since 1999. I have just found out when I brought back, I, I, I did this. My team did this. Not just me. My team did this. We brought back $87 billion. And the reason I, I got this thing was after those, the damn Democrats and Republicans passed that whistleblower law saying, hey, that real whistleblowers would help. They would expose the corruption and the fraud, and they'd be able to, those who bring the money back would get a reward for it. So one of my friends said to me, hey, Susie, you are a real whistleblower. Wouldn't it be cool if a real whistleblower got some of this very real reward money? And so I said, damn, that does sound good. So I went out and I got it back. Well, I found out, I found out that the goddamn Clinton Foundation jumped in and took my money. I had been stupid, I will admit. I had to deal with the FBI to notify, in order to qualify for this stuff, I had to notify the FBI. And after my horrible experience with Bush, I was afraid of the FBI. And so I also notified the Secret Service. But I notified them through the Clinton Foundation, stupidly thinking that the Clintons of all people, the Hillary Clinton people, but I had to protect myself from the FBI. I had to protect myself from anybody at the Justice Department playing some kind of weird freaking game with me. So I notified the Secret Service via the scheduling office at the Clinton Foundation. The Secret Service came to visit me. And they agreed, and they was agreed that that would be a good way for me to, if I needed to give updates on the status of stolen federal money, the worst thing in the world would be if I was accused of money laundering and I was accused of being party to the theft and the conspiracy. And as crazy as this world is, even if I'm recovering it, if I know about it and don't do something about it, I am breaking the law. Well, apparently the Clintons were monitoring all the recoveries. When the $80 billion, $80 billion came in, they jumped in and grabbed my reward. Okay, the, the way that they did it was they paid off someone we all know, and I'm not even going to say his name yet because I'm not ready to say his name out loud. But he is somebody that all of us know, and he had been threatening the Clintons. He had been telling the Clintons that he was going to expose them for certain crimes that they had committed. So my money that had been stolen was originally from his operations way back in the day. And it had been stolen. He had turned the money over to the feds. He had nothing to do with the the theft. But he turned it over to the feds, and then afterwards, the guy that I know, the federal inmate I know, who is a name you don't know, but he's responsible for massive, massive thefts. And he has been running his empire of stolen federal monies from inside federal prison with the help of friends at Fort McDill. 
He is a former Booz Allen contract employee, and Fort McDill is loaded up with Booz Allen contract employees, and they have been helping him manage the stolen federal money for 17 years. The, the Booz Allen contractors at Fort McDill have helped him manage his empire of stolen federal money. So I jumped over. That's another reason I had to go to the FBI and the Secret Service, because I was jumping over Fort McDill to make sure Fort McDill was not able, to, was trying to stop Fort McDill from getting away with this. Well, well, here's what happened, and it's actually something that Hillary Clinton could be indicted over. When the money came in, I had been reporting everything to the Clinton Foundation, to the Secret Service, but of course it was going to the Clinton Foundation. Hillary Clinton found out about the money, and exactly at the point of time that the money came back in, Hillary Clinton, they jumped in. The man who was threatening to expose Hillary Clinton was paid off that he would not disclose, disclose his damaging revelations about Hillary Clinton. He would go away. He is out of the country now, and he just bought a 1,000-acre ranch. And they paid him off to help Hillary Clinton. And they paid him off with with stolen federal monies that had just been recovered that were not officially on the Treasury Department books yet. So the funds had come in, the $80 billion had come in, but they were siphoning bits and pieces of it off to their friends before they entered it onto the books. So it would be untraceable monies. Well, I have been, now here's the irony, here's the kicker, I've been up at the Justice Department beating the crap out of the Justice Department. I have my very own assistant U.S. attorney who I've been de- demanding has to get this money back, and the and I've been up to the vice president's office, Vice President Biden, and I've been all over Capitol Hill demanding that they get this, that they fix this thing, and now, and the Democrats have done nothing whatsoever. Well, here's the clincher. There is an additional one trillion dollars in play at this very moment. Nobody's going after this money. It is one trillion dollars at Citibank. And Hillary Clinton, of course, took a huge payoff from Wall Street and the banks. And we've got one trillion dollars that should be for like a Social Security endowment or should do something really tremendous for the American people. And so now I'm looking at this situation where Hillary Clinton has come in and used my money to pay off, I'm so angry, one of her adversaries who was going to hurt her. So that $1 trillion that belongs to 320 million Americans is, is not coming back to the U.S. Treasury. And Hillary Clinton's actions paying off her adversary raise the other question, which is if they paid off her adversaries with untraceable money, did Hillary Clinton receive and for her campaign or her foundation or in any offshore accounts I worked for this. I, you should, I have 2,000 pages of documentation of my efforts and my actions and I filed a federal court case about it. The merits of my case are powerful and I've got documentation and I can prove everything. And the thing is, I didn't stop. I, I continued to hammer the U.S. Attorney's Office, to get back this $1 trillion. And I said, I am not going away. This money has got to come back to the people of the United States, and I'm not going to let it go. It's on the interbank system, and China is blocking us from taking it back. And we need a president who can stand up to China to make them give this money back to America. I, I'm not the only one working on this. There are three of us. And my partners are Republicans, and they've been demanding, just demanding. They're like, Susan, take this to Trump. You have got your bloody whistleblower, for God's sakes. You've got to tell America. But the real question is, the, the, the question of indictment of Hillary Clinton, the Clinton Foundation, my documentation is superior. Even if the Clinton Foundation said, I don't have any of those records, 
I've got all of them. If the FBI said, I don't have any of those records, I've got all of them. Proofs myself. Well, and you have to have things, in the event of my death, other additional material will be released, as I have, as our friend has, so that they know very clearly you've got alternative cards in your back pocket that if anything happens to you, will be released. 